Hi student, how are you? This time, you will learn about subtopic 11.2 Linear Motion Graph, The Displacement Against Times Graph. Sometimes it is difficult for us to explain motion in words. Therefore, we can use graph to explain the motion of an object in detail. Linear motion is the motion of an object in a straight path. Therefore, a linear motion graph are used to present information and data regarding a motion of an object. There are two types of linear motion graph. Displacement against times graph and velocity against times graph. In this lesson, we will focus more on displacement against times graph. And in the next lesson, you will learn about the velocity against times graph. The displacement against times graph is used to show the displacement of an object changing with time. By referring to the graph of displacement against time, you are able to determine the displacement of an object at a certain time. For example, this object will be at a displacement of 25 meter in 1 second. In 2 second, the displacement will be 50 meter from its starting point. At 3 seconds, the displacement is still 50 meter. And at 4 seconds, until 8 seconds, the displacement are still at 50 meter. Why even though the time changes but the displacement is still remain the same? This is because during this period of time, the object stop moving and rest. The object start rest after 2 seconds until 8 seconds. This means this object resting for 6 seconds. After 8 seconds, this object start to move again. How do you know this object start moving? This object moving when it is experiences the changes in a displacement. The displacement increases when the object moves further away from its starting point. But the displacement of the object will be decreases once the object turning back to its starting point. This is to show you the movement of a car based on this graph. When a car is at the starting point, the displacement is 0 meter and the time is 0 second. When this car starts to move, its displacement changes and increases. When it reaches at the displacement of 50 meter in 2 seconds at the position of A, this car stops move and press. The time is increased but the displacement is still remain unchanged. This means the car is at the rest position for 6 seconds. This car start rest after 2 seconds until 8 seconds and then after 8 seconds it will start to move back again. When it reach at the displacement of 100 meter, this car turn back, therefore the displacement value will become decreases. And when it arrive at the point D, the displacement has become zero. This means this car is back to its original place. Now let's learn how to relate the formula of velocity with the displacement against times graph. You have learned how to calculate velocity by using this formula in previous class. To calculate velocity, you will divide the displacement with the time. When you tag any value of displacement and any value of the time from this graph and you divide, you will also get the value of velocity. Therefore, we can conclude the gradient of the displacement against time's graph is equal to the value of velocity. Kecerunan graph sesaran melawan masa adalah mewakili nilai hal laju. 
Now you know the gradient of displacement against times graph is equal to the value of velocity. Kecerunan graf sesaran melawan masa adalah sama dengan nilai halaju. So to calculate the gradient, you need to find the displacement and the time from the graph. Let's say the question asks you to calculate the velocity of an object at point B to point C. To solve this problem, you need to find the displacement of this object from point B to point C. Therefore, by minus 100 meter with 50 meter, you can get the displacement of this point is 50 meter. Next, to find the time interval from point B to point C. In order to get the time interval here, we need to minus 12 second with the 8 second. Therefore, the time interval from point B to C is 4 second. By using the value of 10, 50 meter for displacement divided by 4 second, we will get the gradient of BC is equal to 20 meter per second, in which it also equivalent to the value of velocity from point B to C. The same concept also apply in calculating the gradient from point C to D, but because of the displacement during this period of time decreases, therefore, it will give the negative value for the displacement. Thus, it will make also the gradient value will become negative. The negative here is represent the direction of the moving object, which means the object is turned back, moving to its its starting point. This is the analysis that can be obtained from this graph. At the point OA and BC, the gradient is positive and uniform. Therefore, its velocity also uniform. This means during this point, the object moving in a uniform velocity. At point AB, the gradient is zero. Its velocity also zero because this object is at rest. At point CD, the gradient is negative but uniform. Therefore, the velocity also negative and uniform, which means the object turn back or moving in the opposite direction. So that's the end of our lesson. Continue doing your practice and see you again in next class.